So Henry is one of four sons that I have. Yeah. And three of them are alive, and they're right down the street. And, uh, and one of them uh, died, and, and he was cremated. Uh, what happened to his soul um, and, and his real essence, I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but he, I know that he remains my son, and he, wherever he is, whatever he is, still receives at least, since there's four of them, 25% of my parenting, energy, love, attention. So where, where did he go? Where is he? I don't know. So American people uh, will, when they review the book on like Goodreads or whatever, there are some American um, Christians who don't like my profanity in the book, all right? Um, and then also are concerned that I don't end it with like a message of faith. And why? I guess I just mentioned that because I do have a spirituality. I do have some kind of faith, but I, I guess I'm not like, I don't have like the hubris to try to define it. Yeah. Also, I, whatever comes next, I don't want my shitty little mind and ego to be able to understand it now on earth. It better be better than that or their God sucks. So <laughs> I just mean to say, I feel like whatever God you believe in, you know, you could look at our story where, yeah, there's a lot of anger, but if your God is worth anything, they ought to be able to handle one guy's understandable anger you know what I mean absolutely and also if your son dies yeah surely you've earned the right to be profane yeah like I feel that way oh I don't yeah. worry I feel it's like it's their problem I yeah. mean because I plus as a comedian like you don't want to swear all the time but it's a pretty it's like black pepper you're not gonna cook <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. you're not gonna you're gonna cook without that like good luck <laughs> 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 What an excellent metaphor that yeah, is. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the only ingredient, thing. but yeah, yeah. you're going to want to have it in your yeah. arsenal. Well, every comic's written a joke and then go, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I better just... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> then now you're going to watch comedians and go, that guy's yeah. put a Ooh, lot of pepper in Wow. Mm. <laughs> or that guy needs some flavouring. <laughs> but it's, it's, that's what makes... Because presumably that's, you know, and you speak very honestly about you know, your relationship with your wife mm -hmm. and, you know, ha having moments, you know, having sex in moments when people might not expect couples to have sex. But presumably, that yeah. is a true representation of what people do. So it's interesting. I wrote that and that's true. So his, his surgery to remove his tumor was in the neighborhood of 13, 14 hours. And so they recommended, they said, what you should do is get a hotel room uh, close to the hospital because um, you'll be scared, you'll be exhausted, you'll be crying, you know, you'll be, and that's probably, in our experience, we find that's kind of the best place. And uh, so we were like, okay, so we did it. So we were in the hotel and uh, we were scared, we were crying, uh, we were watching Friends, um, The Big Bang Theory, and, and then, and we had sex, and we had sex two times. <laughs> and just because we were hugging and we were close and also we're married, so that's one of the things that you can do. And, um, <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes in, in weird moments that you, you want to connect like that. And so uh, I wrote that in like a first draft and I showed it to my wife, I was like, obviously I'll take that out, but I just wanted to make sure I was being ultra honest and then we can take stuff out. And she's like, I don't think you should take that out. And uh, I, <laughs> she was like, people, th I think all the people I know who've lost kids, all the people I know who've had kids in the hospital, and now for us that's a very large number, she's like, they would want to know that, they would appreciate that. So yeah. I kept it in, and it's true. And so a lot of people um, who've had sick kids or kids who died were like, hey, thanks for putting that in. That made us feel like not monsters, you know? Yeah. It made us feel like not sex monsters, <laughs> um, which is, you know, something I try to do. Yeah, but I, but I think... And also, you know, like you, who somebody who assembles things for consumption, you know, tours, television shows, documentaries and stuff, you do think about the story that you're telling, the arc that you're telling, even if it's a true story, we're choosing how it's told, right? And so I thought, knowing what I know about delivering stories to people, I was like, 
I, I was like, I, I smell that the world could use a book where somebody doesn't talk about their grief and then say, but you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or, but you know what? One day the sun did come out and I started to notice the bird songs again and stuff like that <laughs> and, uh, and all that. And because and, there's a temptation to do that. We want to take care of people. We yeah. want, and, and I thought, you know what? I don't think that is the best use of the mouthpiece that I have at this moment. I figured, um, and the response that the book has been receiving, seems to bear it out that it, it it was a good idea to show the horror and the anger and the fear in an unvarnished manner but then at the same time when terrible things are happening that doesn't mean funny things stop happening exactly you know there might be greater stretches where they're not happening but you know in any rarely is any one day one wall-to-wall -wall emotion you know yeah. there's lulls and peaks and valleys so that's what I attempted to do. And it's the, the, the role that horror films now play in your and your wife's life is extraordinary, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. The, the way you consume them is very different to how most people consume horror. Yeah, so they, um, yeah, and I mean, a particular example is the, in, uh, is the beyond violent uh, Midsummer by Ari Aster. Yeah. We saw that um, when Henry was in the, uh, oh gosh, at what point did we see it? Because we saw both his films. I think it was after he died was when Midsummer came out. And we were in the hospital, I'm sorry, the, the movie theater, holding hands and laughing uh, <laughs> because it's horrific what happens in there. But that to us, it's almost like exposure therapy or whatever. Like, yeah, sure, it's horrible. It's not as horrible as what happened to us. So it's almost like an hors d'oeuvre for us or something. <laughs> or like a little hair of the dog. So other people are like, oh God, like I have to bleach my eyes. Whereas we're like, hey, sweetheart, mm, you know, <laughs> put her hair behind her ear. Isn't this, what a night, we're having such fun. Uh, but presumably people that don't know your, your story are just seeing two people oh, in the cinema yeah. kissing in yeah, a horror yeah, film they're, like, they're clearly planning a killing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And no, we're not, we're not. We're just unwinding. Yeah. <laughs>